Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Nerd Paints. So today we're going to paint the repulsor tank. And so what we're going to want to do is I'm going to actually prime the tank and the base and the turrets white. And I'm going to prime the snow trooper black. So you're going to hold off. You're not going to glue everything together, obviously, at this point. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and primed the tank white. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add Celestra Gray to my wet palette. And if you have any questions on how to create a wet palette, I did post a video on how to build your own wet palette if you'd like. Now using the wet palette, I did add a little bit of water just to thin that out a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and brush this over the entire tank. You may need to add a couple layers as well. I'm going to go ahead and paint the guns with this as well. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and take some known oil. I'm gonna go straight from the pot, and I'm gonna use a number two brush. And I'm gonna just add that into the cracks of the tank. So I'm not going over the entire tank, and this might take a little bit of time, but I'm just gonna paint this into the cracks. I'm gonna do that over the entire tank, just painting that within the cracks. I'm gonna do the same thing on the guns as well. So I do, as you can see, I also painted that into the seats, all the different cracks within the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the guns. So I'm gonna paint this into the cracks into these little holes here as well. And then I'm gonna take a dry brush. I'm gonna go back to the Celestra Gray. And just to smooth that out, I'm gonna dry brush this on there. I'm gonna dab this onto a paper towel just to get all the excess off. And I'm gonna dry brush this over the tank. This helps smooth out all of the known oil that may have gotten onto the tank while leaving known oil in the recesses and the cracks. I'm gonna do the same thing with the guns as well. Cool, so for our next step, I'm gonna take some Ulthian Gray. I'm gonna add this to my wet palette as well as a little bit of water. Just to thin that out a little bit more, I'm gonna take a small brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and start highlighting the tank. So I'm gonna go over all of the planks here along the edges and just start painting over the tank just to highlight it. I'm gonna cover the majority of everything on the tank. And after that, I'm gonna take P3 Marl White or you can also use White Scar. I'm gonna add that to my wet palette with a little bit of water. I'm gonna do the same thing essentially as I did before but a little bit less with the white. So I'm gonna start painting over, especially the edges, and then on top of the tank as well, the, to highlight the tops, the top area. I'm gonna paint over quite a bit of the, especially the top parts of the tank, just to highlight here and there. They might add a second layer and with two brushes, I'm gonna just fan this out a little bit more, blend it in better. So I'm gonna use the brush that has the white on it. And then my second brush, which is a clean brush, I'm gonna go ahead and just fan that out, help blend it in. And my second brush is just slightly damp. It doesn't have very much water on it at all, just very slightly damp. And I'm mainly using it just to pull that paint that I'm applying with my paintbrush to help blend it in. After that, I'm gonna take a dry brush. I'm gonna just blend this in just a little bit better. So I'm gonna just go straight from the P3 Mara White or White Scar in your case if you're using White Scar. And then again, I'm gonna use a paper towel to get all the excess paint off. And I'm just gonna dry brush over the tank. Especially from the top down. So that way the top portion of the tank is highlighted more so than the, the bottom half of the tank. I'm gonna do the same thing that we just did with the, with the turrets here. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and paint over with the Ulthian Gray. I'm 
Just be careful not to get into all the recesses that we've applied the nulled oil. And I'm mainly just getting the end here and leaving this part, the gun itself, the darker gray. Because I'm going to actually go over this with a darker paint later on. Now it's up to you on this part. If you want to go with the artwork, then paint the whole gun with the Ultian Gray. But again, I'm going to take the P3 Mara White. I'm going to dry brush this over. Now if you're going, if you want this to look exactly like the artwork, then go ahead and paint over the whole thing with Ultian Gray and then dry brush over it with the white. I'm going to take some Abaddon Black. I'm going to add this to my wet palette as well. I'm also going to add some lead belcher to my wet palette. Put those just kind of next to each other on the wet palette. And I'm going to take a clean brush. I'm just going to blend the two together. I'm going to pull some from the black, pull some from the lead belcher, almost an equal amount. I'm just going to create a shade somewhere right in between these two. I want this to be a, just a really dark metal color. Okay, and then with a smaller brush, I'm going to go ahead and just start painting these details here. I'm, also, I'm actually going to take a piece of masking tape because I want this to be a nice clean line going straight across here. So I'm just going to put the tape straight across here right below this detailed area and then I'm going to paint this. Paint the panels here on the side. Now it might bleed through a little bit with the tape as you can see here, so if it does, just go ahead and go back to some of the Maro, the P3 Maro White or the Ulthian Gray and just touch that up a little bit. But for the most part, it gave us a nice clean line. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side, I added masking tape, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint the, the details here on this back end here. And that painted on pretty cleanly. So. Doesn't look like I need to really do a whole lot of touch up with that one. I'm gonna use that same paint. I'm just gonna paint some of the detailed areas here on the side as well as the tread on the bottom of the tank. Now go ahead and go through and paint all the tread on the bottom of the tank. I'm also gonna paint these metal rings here on the top of the tank. As well as these little rivets here on the front end. I'm also going to use this to paint the panel here inside, just right around where the computer is. Basically anything that I feel is metal poking out or some of the detailed, more detailed metal areas, I'm going to paint with this. So this metal tube looking thing on the front here, on the bottom back side. And then with this I'm also now going to go ahead and jump back to the turrets. And if you're following along with what I'm doing, I'm going to paint just this middle section with black, just pure black. And then I'm going to just paint the, I'm actually going to paint the entire gun with just pure black right now. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to now switch back to the the paint that we created. I'm going to go ahead and paint this detailed area with the with the darker metal color that we created. I might even add a two layers with this. Okay, I'm going to now switch to Iron Breaker and I'm using a dry brush, I'm going to get just a little bit on the tip of the brush, get all the excess off using a paper towel, work that into the bristles, and then I'm going to go ahead and dry brush over the gun. Just the main gun itself, not this middle section. Then I'm going to go ahead and reapply some known oil here in the cracks, in the recessed areas of the gun.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to some of these planks. I'm gonna paint this with a corn red. So I'm gonna add corn red to my wet palette. And this will give us a nice base to work off of. Now if you're going along with the artwork, then just paint this one plank. I'm actually gonna take this a step further because I wanna add a little more red to this. I think it'll look pretty cool. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and paint some of these pattern areas here in the front. And then I'm gonna have that come along the side of the tank as well. And really, this part is up to you as far as what you want to do pattern-wise, if you want to go ahead and take this a step further. Um, I'm just kind of following along here. I think it looks, I think it'll look pretty cool if we add just a little more red to this, just to make it pop a little bit more. So I'm going to paint the back panel, some of the panels along the side here, as well as the top. Also going to paint this panel running along the side here. and then just the panel here that wraps around the back end and the back corner. And then on the front inside part, there's another panel here that I wanna paint red. So again, I'm just using straight corn red. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side just to match. So I'm gonna paint the same panels here on the other side. Like I said, I really like the different panels here and I think, it, I think it'll look pretty cool if we just make it pop a little bit more, adding more red into it. Now on the gun, if you're following along, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the panel here on the back end. And then just like the artwork, I'm gonna paint the ring that goes around the turret here. I'm gonna go back to known oil. I'm gonna go straight from the pot and I'm gonna add some known oil to the turrets. Now you notice I'm mainly painting where the metal is, not, I'm avoiding the white areas and I'm painting pretty much everything else with the known oil. And I'm gonna go over everything that has the dark metal paint that we created. So you're going to paint all the tread on the bottom, you're going to paint the, the gun on the turret, or the metal on the turrets. And then after that I'm going to go ahead and add Mephiston Red to my palette. And then I'll add a little bit of water. And with a small brush I'm going to go ahead and paint over all of the corn red. Whether you're following along with me or you just painted the one panel just like the artwork, go ahead and paint over that. Okay, I'm going to take some Wild Rider Red. I'm going to add that to my wet palette, along with a little bit of water. I want to thin this out, and I'm not using very much of this. I might actually even mix a little bit of Mephistone Red with this, just to give us a nice kind of reddish-orange color. And I'm going to use this as a base to highlight some of the edges of these panels that we painted red. So I'm just going over some of the edges. Um, I'm not painting over everything, just where I want little highlights. Because what I'm actually gonna do after this is go over it again with Mephistone Red, but that'll help really brighten it up, just these edges. So once you're done with that, now go ahead and switch over to the Mephistone Red, and then go ahead and just paint over where you painted this, this orange-red color. I think it looks pretty good so far. So next I'm gonna go switch back to the 
wild rider red and do the same thing here on the turret. So I'm going to add just a little bit here into the red that we painted onto the turrets. And then again, I'm going to go back to Mephison red and then paint over that. I'm going to switch back to another dry brush. This is kind of a smaller dry brush, but I'm going to go to Lead Belcher and add that to my small dry brush. Again, get adding any excess off using a paper towel and help work that into the bristles as well. And I'm going to go ahead and dry brush over the, the turrets, just the areas that we painted with the dark metal. Now I'm going to just take a piece of foam insert and just tear a little piece off. And then I'm going to use this to create some nice little detailed areas onto the onto the tank. But I'm going to take some Abaddon Black. Now, if you don't have foam, you can also use a little bit a little dry brush just to be really careful not to put too much on. But I'm going to dab off all the excess. And then it, I really like using this because it can smear on really well. And I'm going to go ahead and just start at the tip of the turrets and then just smear it downward. This will kind of give it the impression of uh, just some burnt gun residue. But I think it looks kind of cool. I really like this look. So again, I'm just dabbing it on the front and then taking a clean part of the foam and then just smearing it downward. And I'm going to take a little bit of Gilliman Blue Glaze and I'm going to go and brush this onto the, onto the end here of the turrets. This will just give it kind of a nice blue metal look. Then I'm going to switch back to my P3 Mara White or White Scar in your case, if you have, if you're using White Scar. I'm going to add this to the foam and then dab off any excess. I'm going to do the same, th same thing, I'm just dabbing a little bit on here. If you get too much like I just did right here, I'll touch that up here in just a little bit with some red. So if you get too much, go ahead and just touch that up. You don't want to use very much of this, so just put a little bit at the tip of your foam and then just dab it on. I'm going to do the same thing here on the front edges with black. I'm going to put a little bit of Abaddon black on here. I just want to rough up the front end here of the tank. I and mean, that's where it's going to see the most action. So I want to just kind of rough this up a bit. So again, just put a little bit on your on your foam and just dab it on here and there where you want to where you want to apply it and where you want it to be a little more rough. If you put a little too much, then go ahead and just retouch it up. And then with the Abaddon black, on a small brush, I'm going to go ahead and add some gun flare here, some gun damage. So I'm just brushing it and fanning it out here, dabbing it on, and then just fanning it out. And again, right now I'm just using straight Abaddon Black. So like I said, just dab it on, and then I'm just lightly pulling it back as I'm lifting the brush off of the tank, if that makes sense. And then I might take a dry brush and then just a teeny bit on there because you don't want it to go on very much. And then I'm going to do the same thing, just apply just a little bit here on there. As you notice, I'm not getting very much on there. I don't have very much left on my brush. So it still has those little streaks that we just created. But that'll just help roughen it up a little bit. I'm going to take some lead belcher and then again put just a little bit at the tip of my brush. I'm going to paint just the inside part of that black just to make it appear as if it got straight down to the metal of the tank. And if you need to, get some black again and just retouch up just a little bit if you put too much metal on there, or if you put too much lead belcher on there. Might have that come out onto this red portion as well. I'll do the same thing right here as well. Okay, so for this next step, it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to attempt to paint the Imperial logo. To do that, I'm going to use P3 Mara White, or you can use White Scar. So up to you if you want to try this. If not, then no worries, I would skip this part if you don't feel comfortable trying this. But I'm going to use a small brush and just get a little bit of white, just a teeny bit on the tip of my brush. I'm going to start by painting a circle, just a very thin white circle here. And again, if you're going to do this, then just take your time. After that, I'm going to put six very tiny dots 
to where the lines are going to start to go inward here on the circle. Now these lines go directly across from each other, so the dots should go directly across from each other as well. And then next I'm going to now paint an even smaller white circle in the center. And then once you're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and now draw a line going from those dots straight out to that small circle in the center. And then I can make it a little bit thicker here. Now if you mess up, if you make some of the lines a little bit too thick, then you can always retouch up, go back to the red, and then just kind of paint in between there. So, and in my case, I did paint them a little bit too thick, so I'll go back to, to Mephistone Red, and then just touch that up. So I'm just gonna draw thin red lines in between here, just to, just to touch that up just a little bit. I think it looks kind of cool. Now on the other side, if you want to do the same thing on the other side, then totally up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and now skip to the Snow Trooper. So I'm going to start with a dry brush and with Mechanica Standard Gray, get a little bit of gray on the tip of my brush and then just get all the excess off on a paper towel and work that into the bristles. And then I'm going to start by dry brushing a nice base coat here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pretty much cover the whole model or dry brush over the whole Snow Trooper with the Mechanicus Standard Gray. And just try not to get it into his eyes or some of the recesses. And then once you're done with that, I'm going to now go ahead and switch to Ultheon Gray. I'm going to do the same thing. Get a clean dry brush, put a little bit at the tip of the brush, and then again get any excess paint off on a paper towel. And again work that into the bristles at the same time. And then again, lightly go ahead and dry brush this over the Snow Trooper. Just as before, just make sure that you try and be really careful not to get into some of the recesses, the eyes. It's better to have a little, too little paint on the brush than too much. But I'm going to go ahead and dry brush that over the entire Snow Trooper. After that, I'm going to take Carrick Stone and I'm going to add this to my wet palette. And I also added a little bit of water to the Carrick Stone just to make sure that it's fairly thin so the darker recessed areas stay dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the clothing area of the Snow Trooper. And this should go by fairly quickly, so my next step I'm going to go back to Ultheon Gray again, add some of that back to my wet palette, and then again add a little bit of water and I'm going to use this to paint all the armor now on the Snow Trooper. So I'm going to just start with the helmet and just work my way around. So make sure you get the shoulder armor, the armor going around his back, all the armor you're going to use with Ultheon Gray, or you're going to paint Ultheon Gray, including his chest armor. I'm going to take some Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm just going to go straight from the pot. I'm just going to paint the handles here with the Mechanica Standard Gray. Not a whole lot with this paint. And I'm going to take Screaming Skull next and add this to my wet palette as well. And again, add a little bit of water just to thin that out. And then with a number two brush, I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of the brush. I'm going to start painting highlights onto the clothing. So mainly the folds that are coming out, I'm going to paint with a Screaming Skull. I'm going to do this just work my way around the entire Snow Trooper, painting all the folds so that are coming out. Pretty much painting everything except for the more recessed areas with Screaming Skull. And again, this is just on the clothing. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white and again, thin that out, and I'm going to paint highlights onto his armor, starting with the top of his helmet. And if you need to, with a nice clean brush, I'm going to use that to help fan that out a little bit, to help blend that in. So I'm going to paint over his shoulder armor, his chest armor, his helmet, and all these little divots that are poking out on his shoulder armor as well, I'm going to paint with, with straight white. 
and I'll highlight maybe the top of his chest armor as well. So if the light is coming down and it's reflecting off the top of his chest armor, you want that to be white. I'm going to take a really small brush, in this case a 000000. So I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet, which if you notice I added this to my wet palette a little while ago, but I actually haven't used. So you can either use Evil Sun Scarlet or Mephiston Red for this. Either one. I'm going to go ahead and paint these little tiny lights that are on his, on his armor. That should do it for the Snowtrooper. I think it looks pretty cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and start gluing things together. So I'm going to take some super glue. Just going to put some here inside of the tank where the turrets go. And then just go ahead and press those turrets in there. Try not to get too much glue in there. You don't want it to ooze out. So just put a little bit. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the snow trooper and then just put him inside of the tank. Just go ahead and make sure you press him in firmly. Okay, now go ahead and let that glue dry for a good 30 minutes and then we will move on to the base. So I didn't glue the tank on, I just set it on there just to get an idea of where I'm going to put the rocks. So I have a couple of rocks, that I, smaller rocks, as well as Battlefield's Black Battleground. So I'm going to take some white glue and just go and put that in a white plastic palette, add in a little bit of water, I'm just going to go and stir that in. And then you're going to want to use a brush that you don't care about. Uh, but I'm just going to get an idea here where I want to put the rocks in relation to the tank. So I'm just going to set them on here just to get an idea. I'm going to put some super glue on the bottom of some of these rocks, these larger rocks. I'm just going to go ahead and glue those in. So again, I didn't glue the tank onto the base. I'm only putting it on there just to glue the rocks. Make sure that it's in the right place. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and take the white glue and just going to put that here where this third rock is going to go. Maybe add a little bit of super glue on the bottom of that as well, just to make sure it holds. And go ahead and press that in. I might add another rock here on the back of the base as well. So again, I'm going to go and put super glue on the bottom of that rock and then just put it on there. Once the rocks are glued on, just these larger rocks, I'm going to go ahead and pull the tank off. And I'm going to pretty much cover the base with the white glue. Again, I'm using a brush that I don't care about at all. I'm gonna maybe put a little bit of glue on top of these larger rocks, not very much, just a little bit. Also, don't put glue on the portions of the base that are poking up that go into the tank. I'm gonna take that battleground earth and sprinkle that on, make sure it covers the glue completely. It's okay if you put too much on there, um, just wanna make sure it covers the glue completely. I'm just gonna go ahead and shake any excess off back into the container. Now I'm doing this over a paper towel. It's gonna to get a little messy, so make sure you do this over something that you don't care if you're gonna make a mess. And before that glue dries, I might also rub off any of this, the battleground earth off of the, the edges of the, the base. Now you're gonna to wanna to let that dry for at least 30 minutes. Then once it's dry, I'm just gonna brush off any of the excess battleground earth off of that. Give it a nice good shake and tap just to get any excess off. Okay, now your next step, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and prime this black. So once it's completely dry, then go ahead and prime it with a black primer. And then once it's primed, I'm gonna take Dawnstone and a dry brush, and then put some on the tip of my brush, again, get any excess off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dry brush onto the base. Get a little bit onto these larger rocks, and then dry brush over the battleground earth. Okay, next I'm going to take Administratum Gray, and then same thing, I'm going to go ahead and dry brush the, some of this on there as well. Maybe I'll get a little bit more on the tops of the rocks here where the snow will start piling up, and then again dry brush this over the base. After that, take P3 Mara White or White Scar, and then just as before, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, dry brush this on here. Might dry brush a little bit on top of the tips of these rocks here as well. This gives us a nice base to work off of. 
Now there's a couple ways that you can do the snow. I'm gonna show you two different ways. One is using snow flock. So I'm gonna take white glue, and then I'm gonna mix some snow flock in there. I'm gonna add quite a bit. I'm gonna go and mix that up with a toothpick. I want it to be fairly thick with the snow. And then again with a brush that I don't care about, I'm gonna go ahead and brush some of this on here. I've noticed that using this type of snow, it, it looks a little more slushy. Um, but you can add more snow flock to, to pr make it a little thicker so it's not as slushy. Then I might also take some Winter Tuft from Army Painter. And I'm gonna add this in a few places. I'm gonna add some super glue to the bottom of this and then go ahead and put maybe a patch here on the side. You take a toothpick just to press that, a toothpick just to press that down nice and firm. But again, you're gonna put some super glue on the bottom of the tuft and then just go and press that down. Might put one in between the rocks here as well. Just using a smaller one right here, maybe on the side here next to the rocks. And then after that, I'm going to add a little bit more snow here next to the rocks. Just let this pile up a little bit. Really, it's up to you where you want to put your snow. Now, the other option, which I really like, is Valhalla Blizzard by Citadel. I actually really like this snow, so I'm going to use mostly this. So this is the second option that you can use. So again, I'm going to go and brush this on, and then I'm going to Make it a little bit thick in some areas and then just thin it out as I go in some other areas. And you can just go ahead and brush this around where you want to add your snow. You notice I'm covering most of the base with this. Leaving some areas but covering most of it. Now before you let this dry you're going to want to put super glue onto these four areas that go up into the tank. Now you're going to want to, again, do this before the snow dries. So that way when you press the tank down, all the snow will just build up around the tank and you can press down into the snow. So before you let it dry, go ahead and now add super glue to the parts that go up into the tank. Or you can also add the glue into the, the holes of the tank itself and then just press it down firmly and then make sure it gets onto the base. But once it's pressed down into the base, I might add a little bit more snow here onto the onto the winter tuft as well. I think this looks really cool. Now once you're at this point, let it dry completely. Let the snow dry, everything dry completely before you seal it with a lacquer. Now once you've sealed it with a lacquer, let that dry. And then I'm going to use some Ard Coat. And this is going to make this helmet shine a little bit better. And so I'm going to add this to the, mainly his helmet and his armor. All right, I think that does it for the repulsor tank. I really like how this one turned out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really had a lot of fun painting this one. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my Patreon page to support further videos. Also, a special thank you to all my patrons and for your support. I really appreciate it. But I hope you enjoyed this episode and found some useful tips along the way. And thanks for painting with Nerd Paints. Thank you.